And today, the FBI here in America arrested an Ohio man for allegedly plotting an attack on the U.S. Capitol. Christopher Lee Cornell reportedly expressed interest in an alliance with Islamic State, but the FBI does say that the public was never in any danger. Joining me now from New York is counterterrorism expert Robert McFadden, senior vice president of the Sufan Group. Uh, Robert McFadden, when you hear news of uh, this arrest in Ohio, is it something we just have to start taking as being part of normal life now? Well, uh, it's concerning, uh, right at face value, that, that's for sure, for law enforcement security services in the U.S. and the allies. But at the same time, um, you know, it's important to keep things in perspective and balance when you're talking about, at least for America and, and, and North America, that it's a really extraordinarily small percentage of, of individuals like this, although we don't know many of the details, uh, that are attracted to this type of ideology in affiliating um, with a group like the Islamic State. I guess you could also say the same of France and of Europe. It is actually a tiny fraction of people who are attracted to the idea of violence in the name of Islam, but that's all it takes. It only took three people in Paris last week. A absolutely, and uh, you know, let, let me not mis be uh, misspoken that it only takes a small number to be terrifically lethal. If we look at what happened in France, uh, this is a uh, low density terrifically high impact operation where you just have less than a handful involved and we see the kind of coverage and terror uh, that this has received in the last week. But, but you know, when you talk about different countries in different regions, though, there, there are uh, local circumstances and, and unique factor. Take France, for example. It has the largest number of foreign fighters that it's dealing with that have been that have gone to Syria. Uh, official estimates as of the spring of 2014 around 700, but now believed to be at 1,000 or, or higher. Also, French has some very challenging issues with domestic terrorism, even unrelated to the foreign fighters that it's been dealing with for a number of years. So although the percentages are small, what the French services are dealing with is, is much more um, significant by volume than it is in the United States or Canada. Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula released a video today claiming uh, responsibility for the attack in Paris. How much credibility do you give that claim? And in a sense, uh, does it matter if there was an organization behind it. Well, well, if we look at what we have right now, you had the two brothers that were saying at least twice by witness accounts that they were doing the operation on behalf, behalf of al-Qaeda in Yemen. Then we had the official announcement uh, by um, uh, one of its spokesmen, who actually I'm acquainted with that individual, he is truly old guard al-Qaeda, that officially said it was an AQAP act. So, um, for all intents and purposes, it is, in fact, an AQAP operation because it achieves its goal of showing its viability. It's still an entity with an external operations branch to be dealt with. Now, the facts, though, will determine, was it direct control, command and control? Was it inspirational? Was it a legacy operation, or was it something uh, in between? And, Robert, does that matter? Um, well, it does, it does matter in some sense. Um, first, we have no indication that al-Qaeda Corps or its Arabian Peninsula affiliate has given up the external operations. So on any given day, when it can, it will continue to try these big, spectacular operations. But if there is, let's say, and I really emphasize that um, there's a lot of skepticism whether it was direct command and control involved, if it represents, let's say, a change in tact where it will support a, a wolf pack, a small cell, and these kind of operations that involve ambush and, and assassination, it could be very much significant. Okay, Robert McFadden, thanks for joining us.